Hey folks, welcome back to another case opening video. We're back once more with the third installment of Intel's, this time from the current dot 14 patch. Most people only care about the actual openings. We'll jump right into those in a few seconds. If you're interested in how I got all the values you're about to see, comparing these to the past wipes videos, notable loot uh, and more, watch through the whole thing. Additionally, there are always timestamps in the descriptions and the video scrubber to skip around to those parts if you don't care about all of them. If you want to check out the previous two openings, links are in the description as well. With all that out of the way, thanks for watching. Let's open some cases.
Alrighty. If all you cared about was the openings and you're clicking off, that is totally okay. I appreciate you stopping by the video. I hope you have a good one. However, I encourage everyone to stick around for more information on all this and comparisons between now and the previous wipes. In the last 50 Intel's video, I yapped quite a bit because I was reacquainting myself with things. So I'm going to try to keep it a bit more straightforward this time. Uh, but I do have a lot more detail. So hopefully the yapping is more organized at least. So jumping right into totals, we of course used 50 Intel in this video. This time around and going forward into future wipes, I kept all of my info in a spreadsheet. So I have much more detail with it this time. Uh, throughout the course of the wipe, I averaged an Intel cost of 268,000 rubles each. This was achieved by using seven that I had found in raid while playing during the opening. So those counted as zero in my averaging. Uh, and then purchasing the other 43 for between 200k flat and 380k. So it jumped up quite a bit early wipe. Um, so not factoring in the seven free ones, the average goes up a good bit to 300 at 11,627 rubles per intel now this puts my personal total input cost at 13 million four hundred thousand rubles the raw input without those seven free ones would have been about 15 million five hundred eighty thousand rubles for comparisons i'll be using my own personal totals as i feel like that's more realistic for me but i wanted to put out the differences for folks in case they're looking to buy all their intel should they decide to do this themselves uh you could sell your raw intel that you get from raids and cover that difference it's up to you really it should kind of even out next up looking at return value all of my 50 openings added up to a return of 13 million four hundred fifty six thousand six hundred one rubles if you've seen the previous two intel videos from past wipes you may notice that this is the first time i've actually netted a profit however small it might be uh, comparing my input cost to my return value, we can see a staggering profit of 56,601 rubles. Pretty sick. The last bit of info I have for totals is the average case value, which came out to 268,752 rubles per case on average. When you compare that to my personal average Intel cost of 268k flat, you can see we averaged a whopping 752 ruble profit per case. We'll take it. Here's all that information again, real quick, just the important bits uh, to look at before we move on. All right, next up, we'll talk about some disclaimers on the scav case and the values we had for each one. A lot of this is info folks probably already know or have heard in previous videos, so I'll try to keep it straightforward, but a lot of other people might not know about it, so I feel like it's important and valuable to speak on. Firstly, how did I get the ruble values of each case? Whenever I opened a case, I would put the items I got from it into my spreadsheet and then go to a handy website called TarkovMarket.com. This is a website where you can search any item in the game and look at a wealth of data on its flea market value. It has a lot of other tools and a paid version you can use to see more long-term data, but I do not currently pay for it. Once on the website, I would put down the seven day average price for the items I got in the case that I just opened and then add them all up for the case's total value. I use the seven day average because prices fluctuate a good bit between night and day cycles for servers. So I feel like an average over the last week is more accurate. If you're interested in looking at the website more, it is linked down below. Now, disclaimer one is that the flea market is of course always changing. I play in NA, so prices might differ in other regions and prices change throughout the wipe as well. These 50 cases were open between January 14th and February 7th. So we were about three-ish weeks into the wipe and wrapped up about seven weeks into the wipe. Intel often starts out very cheap and then quickly rises in this time period, as I mentioned earlier, as I started buying them at 200K and they were pushing 400 by the time I was done, which is a doubling in price in just four weeks. Moreover, the biggest thing you usually use Intel scav cases for is to dig for rarer keys. And much like Intel, the value of these keys is going to drop over time due to supply and demand. Rare quest keys and loot room keys are worth a lot early wipe, but as time goes on and people get their quests done and more and more of all the types of keys enter the game, there's less demand but more availability. So over time, Intel cases become, theoretically at least, more expensive to open while also yielding less lucrative results. This can, however, be offset by further points I'm about to talk about. Disclaimer 2 is that there are certain items that are flea banned. Here is a list of everything from the video that was flea banned at the time of making it and the values that I used uh, for them instead of the flea market average from Tarkov Market. 
These values are pooled from the vendor value you would get for selling it to the best respective trader. So a mechanic for the guns and ragman for the armor and gear. The third and final disclaimer touches on both the first two. And that is the raw ruble value of both flea band items and keys is not always the best measurement to look at when determining something's worth. In the case of a flea band gun, an SR25 for example might only sell to mechanic for 58k rubles, but if you take it out into a raid where you might have otherwise used the worst weapon, you could win more fights and use that 58k valued gun to extract much more than 58k out of a raid, or multiple raids if you survive long with it. This is even more so the case with keys. Even early wiper keys are often the most expensive. Using a key will yield more than its flea market value. For example, you might get a dorm smart key from an Intel case, and at the time it's selling for 2.5 mil, which is a lot, and you might be tempted with that, but instead you take it into customs and use all 10 uses and walk away with 7 or 8 million in loot, which is obviously a lot more than 2.5, but it takes time, so it's a trade-off you kind of have to make a decision on for yourself. And here's a quick recap of all that information real quick before we move on. Now before we wrap up the video, we can compare the three wipes data that we've collected so far. Keep in mind these numbers are all for my specific scenarios, the time frame that I bought them in, sold things in, etc. Everyone's numbers are going to look a little different. You can't really glean any meaning from comparing these things from the market or trends or anything. It's just fun to look at. So first up we have our average Intel costs. The dot 12 wipe came in the cheapest with a huge spike in dot 13 and a small return back down to 268k this wipe in dot 14. Then we have input costs, which will largely trend the same as average Intel costs. This is just the previous chart times 50. It's interesting to see that pretty huge spike of 6 million uh, between dot 12 and dot 13 though. Next, we have our return values, and this is where things get spicy and misleading. We can see a steady increase in return value from wipe to wipe, with a slightly bigger jump happening between dot 13 to this wipe. This looks nice in isolation, but of course, if we factor in that input cost, we get a profit loss, which looks much different. Starting up with dot 12, we had a pretty insignificant loss of 340k, whereas dot 13 saw a huge loss of 5.65 mil roughly, which oddly enough is close to that 6 million jump in input costs I mentioned a second ago. Intel was just really inflated that wipe and outputs retain similar values, so that kind of just made the difference between those two wipes there. Anyway, that takes us to this wipe, where again, for the first time, we netted a small profit value, but of course, at 56k, that's not really saying much. And that about wraps the video up. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I decided to cut out the notable cases section to cut back on the video length a bit. It's not really needed. People who know what the big keys are are going to see them in the openings and people who don't are obviously going to see a oh, big number and understand that that was a good case. So I don't really think that section is needed. Um, I appreciate everybody who watches all the way through. Uh, these videos seem to do fairly well for a channel of my size. So I appreciate the love that I've gotten on all of them so far. I'm finally all caught up now to current wipe.14 and I'll be putting out the first moonshine scav case video either next weekend or the weekend after and then from there on we'll be caught up and on pace to actually put these out when they're more relevant. Uh, so hopefully that makes more sense in the context of the time frames of the wipes and whatnot but um, yeah that's all from me like comment subscribe if you want either way I love you have a good day peace.